Uh, the second talk in this session uh, it will be given by uh, Linda Geiser, uh, homogeneous formation of SLR normal point data. So good morning, everybody. Um, today I would like to talk about the homogeneous formation of SLR normal point data. First, I give a short introduction of the data flow of the normal points, how they are built, and also um, how our SLR processing works at our institute AIUB. Then I would like to show you the first results um, where we compared different screening techniques. And also there is a second part where we try to use the variance component estimation um, where we weight the different um, data from the different station. So first of all, to the data flow of the normal point. So we have a lot of station here um, so ILRS station, active one, and they are doing their observations. And so they have the so-called full rate data. Then to compress them, um, they use or they build these normal points. And these normal points are then provided to the ILRS and they archive, collect, and also provide them to the analysis centers. And the analysis centers then will use them for the SLR processing. And now our idea was because since 2018, um, the ILRS also recommended to also provide the full rate data um, that we may can generate the normal points based on this full rate data um, at our institute. So that they are not built at the site so it's more like that uh, also the analysis centers can build them. Um, and the starting point was um, that we use the full rate data from Zimmerwald. Now, how to build the normal point. So first of all, we have the observations and we also do a prediction. And we get observe minus computed here on the left side. Then to get rid of the, some trends, um, we fit a trend function, which can be an orbital function or um, low degree polynomials. Um, then we end up with the fit residuals, which if the fit is good, it should be only the random error of each observation. Now we would like to build the normal points and therefore maybe here um, we have also to select which are the data which should be used to build the normal points. But here I already show you that we screened something, but I will say more um, later on. So now we took the so-called good data to build the normal point. And the normal point, for example, for Lachos are built every two minutes. Um, what we are doing is to take the closest observation to the mean epoch of this bin of these two minutes and we take this observation and we subtract the fit residuals so the random error of this single observation and what we are doing then is to add um, here the the mean random error of the total bin so we try to reduce um, the error of the observation to the error of the random error of the bin itself. Now, as I said, we need to decide which data or which observations are used to build this normal point. And here I will show two techniques. First is an RMS-based rejection level, which is also used um, for in the ILRS normal point algorithm. So this means that we assume here maybe we can see it um, that the data are Gaussian distributed and we say we take um, plus minus 2.5 sigma and these are all the data are then used to build the normal points but 
um, there was also the idea um, that we can have a leading edge method. So this means that we are searching, or what we are doing here is we search for the leading edge, um, which means the half maximum um, here maybe on the lower part. Um, and we say how much, um, for example, picoseconds we add and which the, the, the data within this limit um, are used for building the normal point. And in this case, um, we do not assume that it's Gaussian distributed and we can clearly see that this is here not the case. Um, and here it's the problem or it's um, a convolution of the signature, um, of the satellite signature and also um, due to the signature of the detector. And what we can see here, this tail, is due to the detector. And if we say we using this leading edge method, um, we are more confident to use only um, the real data coming or the real data coming from the satellite. Now to the SLR processing. Um, so first of all, we need geometric information like the earth rotation parameters, the station coordinates, we also need an a priori orbit, and we also have to add some corrections like range biases, for example, and we need the normal point data. And all this kind, um, kind of, of files and information we are needing um, to do the processing where we um, do a parameter estimation based on least squares and we can estimate station coordinates, earth rotation parameters, and so on. So now the idea is that we build the normal points in different ways and see how um, it affects our SLR processing and how our estimated parameters change. So for that, um, we have here the parametrization and we are only um, looking to data from Lachos 1 and 2. And here you see the parametrization and what's maybe also special is that we now also estimate the range biases for Zimmerwald because we now use another technique to, to generate the normal points and so the center of mass corrections are maybe not correct. So as I said, we will have two screening methods, the one based on the RMS based rejection level and the leading at edge method. And we only have a look on weekly SLR solutions from July to October 2019. And what I really want to say here is that we only use or we change the data from Zimmerwald. And on the right side, you can see for all the weekly solution, the contribution of the data from Zimmerwald. And it's between 2 to 14 percent of the total um, data volume. And now we have the first results. So we generated the normal points in these two different ways. Um, and what we can see here is the estimated earth rotation parameters. And we can see um, that maybe the weighted RMS of the polar um, motion is slightly, um, yeah, slightly bigger for the RMS based um, screening like three to five percent, um, so not that much, but um, you have to think that we only change two to 14 um, percent of the data. So maybe if we would change the total set of data, it would look like different. And also here for the station coordinates, we see that we already see changes there. And now we have a closer look on the range biases, which are now estimated. And also here we can see that they are maybe in the millimeter range, range for, for Lachos, and that they differ the mean value. And here it's submillimeters. But even though we can say that the range biases are a bit more stable for the leading edge method. Now, the second part of this presentation is, as I said, about using the variance component estimation, um, which is applied on per satellite and per station. So first, first of all, the 
variance component estimation in a nutshell. Um, so we have a normal equation system per satellite and now also per station. And what we are doing is if we combine them, we are having here um, a weight which is estimated and this is the a posteriori variance factor. And what we can get here is the weight then of this next system. And to show it here, what this means is that for each station, we will have um, a, an a posteriori variance factor um, for per station and per satellite. And if we now do exactly the same using the two different uh, methods, and we can see here, for example, that we can strongly reduce the weighted RMS of the Y pole, but the X pole is slightly increased. So, yeah, it's really difficult to say or to say why this happens, that the X pole is worse. Um, but we also can see here that the weighted RMS of UT1 minus UTC is also decreased. Um, on the right side, we can see the weights coming from the VCE. And so if the weights are higher, this means that this data um, are fitting better to the a priori model that we used. And what we can see here that for the, the leading edge methods, the weights are almost everywhere higher. And especially in Legos 2, we can clearly see that that the weights are higher. So this means that it seems to be that the leading edge method is better or fits better to the a priori models. So the summary would be um, that we have different screening techniques um, and we can use them and that we can really check the quality of these um, normal points by doing the SLR processing. And we also can use the variance component estimation per um, satellite and per station. And it seems to be that the leading edge um, is better than the RMS-based rejection level. Um, the outlook would be that we still can do um, or investigate new screening techniques or we can um, improve the current screening techniques and what we are want to do is to apply these techniques on all the full rate data um, from all the stations. Um, but there I have to mention that up to now the full rate data are almost only have already the good data. This means they already screened. So it would be very nice maybe from the station to think about to um, provide more than only this good data so that we can do this screening by our own. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Linda. Yeah, very interesting. Uh, any question? Um, maybe uh, Matthew. Hi, uh, thank you very much for your talk. And um, I agree that stations should provide um, uh, all, all the satellite returns in their full rate data uh, files. Uh, in your uh, two uh, RMS and leading, leading edge comparisons, did you find that it was necessary to change your center of mass offset? So if you... Sorry. So if you can see here, as I said, we estimated the range biases. Okay. Um, so I think it, they are almost the same, but even though we have some differences, so I would say that if we maybe have a longer time span, we can see if we have to adapt the, the center of mass corrections. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, quick question. Um, in your comparison, uh, would you already be able to recommend one or the other technique uh, for specific targets or it's still uh, under evaluation, let's say? Yeah, it's still under investigation because we only did it now for Lechos and only, more or less, only for Zimmerwald. And we also have to check how it's um, for other station with maybe a kilohertz system and so on. So I don't think that we really can, or it's now not in the way 
that general that we can use it for, for every data input. Okay, thanks. Uh, one, uh, uh, yeah. Let me start with the online question. Uh, which one was? Uh, uh, this is from uh, Claudia Flora Bekage. Uh, you showed two methods to build normal points, Gaussian leading edge. Are SLR stations in, in general using the first method? I think there the station can better answer this question, but I think yes. some of them are using the leading edge, like Hersman, so if I'm not... No, no. Probably GRATS, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah GRATS for certain satellites. Okay. And probably and anybody... And GRATS on Shanghai, leading uh, edge Shanghai method. Shanghai do it. Okay, thank you. And also um, for the fit, um, for the trend function, um, I think there are also differences how the station are doing this. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, be, uh, well, Tom, be, be short uh, because of the time. Thank you. Okay. So the difference that you are seeing between the leading edge and the RMS-based approach is because actually the convolution of the, uh, the satellite response and the detector all gives a much more well-defined leading edge rather than the, the trailing edge is much more skewed. And uh, so that is... In my opinion, that is the primary reason for the leading edge being more precise in terms of timing. Yeah, that's true. We already um, have a larger limitation on which data we are using um, for the leading edge method. Uh, sorry, because of the, the, the time, uh, I, I'd like to... Oh, yeah, but, but, uh, you definitely uh, uh, attracted many people's interest.